This is the second section of the elastic strings, springs, tings, kings and things chapter. And we're going to be looking at Hooke's law and dynamics problems. Now, the only difference between this and the previous section, we're still using Hooke's law. Uh, in the last section, things were in equilibrium. Here, there's going to be some movement, some acceleration. So we're going to be doing F equals MA. And remember, uh, here, F is going to be the resultant force. And this resultant force is probably going to have something that has some deten uh, detention. Uh, includes some tension okay and then that tension is what we're going to plug in here uh, so we can then apply Hooke's law one end of a light elastic string of natural length 0 0.5 meters okay so there's um, L and modulus of elasticity there's lambda is 20 is attached to a fixed point A Okay, the other end of the string is attached to a particle of mass 2 kg. The particle is held 1.5 meters below A and released from rest. So what we've got here, imagine like you've got a mass on an el elastic band and you're holding it and then it gets released from rest. Okay, so you've got this string stretched out from its natural length of 0.5 meters that's what it would be naturally and it's been extended to 1.5 meters so I can work out that the extension so this is L here the extension of it is going to be 1 meter okay so that means actually it's going to be it's going to want to go this way like fly up so the acceleration is going to be upwards. We've got the mass of the particle, which is uh, 2. So its weight is 2g. And then we're going to have the tension going this way. And we want to find the initial acceleration. So let's start by resolving forces upward. So I will have um, the resultant force will be T minus... 2g equals ma so 2a right so we are we need to know what t is so now we can use Hooke's law to find um, t so that will be equal to 20 that's lambda times by x which is 1 that's the extension divided by the natural length which is 0 0.5 so t is 40 40 newtons that can go back here yeah that 40 is going to go here so that will be 40 minus 2g equals to a so a equals 40 minus 2g divided by um 2 or divided by a so answer for part A, the acceleration, let's work that out, 40 minus 2G, it's a shame we don't have a, a G button on the calculator, um, so that's 51 over 5, which is 10.2, so 10.2 meters per second square, so there's the initial acceleration, okay, part B, the length of the string when it reaches its maximum speed. Now at the maximum speed, there's no acceleration. So you could say now it becomes a, an equilibrium problem. The forces are balanced. So there is no F equals MA. What we'll have, well, you could have F equals MA. You just have T minus 2G equals zero. In other words, T will equal uh, 2G. Putting this into Hooke's law, we will have 2g equals, now the modulus elasticity is the same. Um, we're trying to work out x so that we can work out what its length will be. Um, and its natural length is 0 0.5. So x equals 
uh, 2g times by 0 0.5 divided by 20. So the length of the string is going to equal that x plus its natural length. So 0 0.5 plus 2g times by 0 0.5 over 20. So we'll work that out. 0 0.5 plus 2g, 2 times 9.8. Uh, times by 0 0.5 over 20 and we get 99 over 100 which is 0 0.99 so 0 0.99 meters so it's still longer than its natural length when it's reached uh, its maximum speed when there's no more acceleration and uh, actually let's highlight this answer here as well. Right, a particle of mass 0.5 kg is attached to one end of a light elastic spring of natural length 1.5 meters. There's L. Modulus of elasticity 19.6. So it's, that's going to be our M. This is going to be lambda. The other end of the spring is attached to a fixed point on a rough plane which is inclined to the horizontal at an angle of alpha. Let's begin to draw this out. Right, this angle of alpha, where tan alpha equals three quarters. Right, let's go for this again. Alpha, uh, tan alpha is three quarters, opposite over adjacent, so that's five. So sine alpha is uh, 3 over 5, cos alpha is 4 over 5, and um, coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is 0 0.2, the particle is held at rest on the plane at a point which is 1 meter from O down the line of the greatest slope of the plane. The particle is released from rest and moves down the slope. Find its initial acceleration. So let's finish this drawing off here. So you've got a spring held at some point at the top, like this. Okay, so that's probably enough of my spring. I've got a mass here. Now let's think about this. Um, the natural length of the spring is 1.5. The particle is one meter down from the end of the spring. So the spring is in compression. That means there's thrust. The spring wants to move this way. So there's our T going that way. Even though it wants to move that way, we're going to have friction this way. And that's going to be mu R. So if we have friction and mu r, we need to know r, which means we need to break out the force into its components. So this will be 0 0.5 g. And we'll work out these bits here. So at the side, we will have 0 0.5 g cos alpha, which is 0 0.5 g times by four fifths. And if we work that out, I'm sure we can simplify that even more. 0 0.5 times by uh, four fifths is gonna give us two fifths G. So that just becomes two fifths G. And down here, we'll have 0 0.5 sine alpha. So that's gonna be 0 0.5 times by three fifths uh, G, oh, sorry, 0 0.5 G times by three fifths. Um, so that's going to be 0 0.5 times by three fifths. So we get three over 10 G. Now, because we know the natural length of the spring and we can work out its compression, 
um, and we know the modulus of elasticity, we can work out the tension. So we'll start with that. So T equals uh, lambda x over L. Um, so T equals, now lambda we were told was 19.6, which happens to be 2 times 9.8. wonder if that's deliberate. Times by x, now the spring was 1.5 meters long. That was its, its natural length. And it's been squashed down to one meter. So the compression is 0.5 meters. I know this isn't to scale. So x is going to be 0.5 over its natural length, which is 1.5. So this will give us T equals, let's work this out, 19.6 times 0.5 divided by 1.5 is 98 over 15. I might leave it as that because it's like 6.5333 um, three, 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 three recurring. So um, let's change that back, 98 over 15, 98 over 15 newtons. Now we'll start resolving the forces because we want to work out the initial acceleration. So if we start by resolving perpendicular to the slope because we're going to need mu r if we're going to, when we start resolving parallel to the slope. So that will give us r equals uh, 3 temps g. No, not 3 temps g, equals 2 fifths g. So r equals the 2 fifth g. So now we're going to resolve parallel to the slope. Now we're told that, um, well, it doesn't matter if we resolve upwards or downwards, we just need to know that the, which direction it's gonna be moving in. So since the string is compressed, or the spring, sorry, is compressed to meter, the whole thing wants to accelerate down the slope yeah so maybe i'll change my arrow to down like that so going down the slope um, i have t and my 3 over 10 g um, and going up the slope i have my mu r so mu is 0 0.2 and I have R, which is 2 fifths G. So that's my resultant uh, force and that's going to equal MA and the mass is 0 0.5. Okay, so basically A equals, it's gonna be all of this, isn't it? So we know what T is, so that can go here. So A equals 98 over 15 plus 3 temps G minus 0 0.2 times 2 fifths G all divided by 0 0.5. So I'll let my calculator do all the hard work to find A. So I get this massive fraction, 6 five one seven over three seven five i could leave it like that meters per second but really we want three significant figures so when i press the sd button i get 17.3786667 so three significant figures will go for 17.4 meters per second squared so that's quite a a fast um, initial acceleration, quite high. You don't normally see those types of figures, but I suppose with a spring, um, you know, under compression or maybe under tension, you get that initial flick as things uh, begin to move. So I suppose it's not surprising when we're dealing with things like springs and that. Okay, so you should now be able to do exercise 3B on pages 47 to 48. So we've got our Hooke's Law as usual, but now we're going to be using F 
equals MA, where F is going to be our resultant force. And this is no different from working out the resultant force that we do on any type of question where uh, there's like some sort of initial acceleration. So it may be something on a slope like this. Uh, it may be something hanging vertically like this. So it could be a string or a spring with some sort of mass on the end. Or it could be where you've got um, a maybe a string or a spring sort of um, this way. Yeah, um, but what's important, look at whether the, the string or the spring is in compression or, uh, or extension. So you can work out the, um, the direction which the particle wants to move. So I'm gonna say um, always um, start by working out which direction which direction the particle is going to move and you'll know that by whether the string or spring is in uh, uh, compression or extension because the spring wants to to move the other way if it's in extension it wants to flick back, it wants to get back to its natural length. If it's in compression, again, it wants to spring out to its natural length. So use that to help you what direction it's initially going to be moving in.